going on everybody? This is Slick from Breaking the Clutch, back again with another build order guide video. Today we've got Yap Yap, and of course there are 25,000 different things you can do with Yap Yap off the start. This one is definitely my favorite, so I had to do it first. Uh, this one was actually shared to me from Neckhammer from the BTC Discord server. Thank you, Neckhammer. And then was also tweaked a little bit by Uncut Precision, BTC Discord moderator. And then I jumped in and did a couple final tweaks myself. So thank you to you guys for the inspiration on this. This is called Speed Tech Swarm. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so the premise of the build is you throw down an extractor and then you spam basically as many uh, cannon fodder grunts as possible and send at least groups of two grunts to each and every supply slot off in front of your base. That's the concept behind it. Having two at each supply slot, each supply crate drop, will actually get you more supplies off the get. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wait a second and upgrade your power extract the second it's done, get methane wagon as a leader power, keep queuing up those cannon fodder grunts and throw down a second extractor when you have enough supplies. Having all these starting cannon fodder grunts and keep making more will actually give you enough money to have twice the power in even one upgraded extractor right off the get. Like those are your first two buildings. So you're gonna have a great start power-wise to your economy. Guess what the concept is? You're gonna try to uh, tech up to tech two as quickly as possible. The rest of your buildings on your main base are going to be all supply pads. And once you throw down your fifth building on your main base, you're gonna go for a mini base as quickly as possible. All this time, I'm constantly pumping cannon fodder grunts. So right off the bat, you saw it, I threw down a power extractor, queued up three grunts, and then immediately sent all my grunts out two at a time to grab supply crates. As you're gonna see here, you're gonna have a second gap in uh, time. You're gonna get a little stressed out for sure because all these buildings are a little bit spaced out. It's not a very smooth build, but in the end, you will get tech two at two minutes and I believe around 20 seconds. I think it might be like 2.17, something like that. But it's very exciting. Like I said, the whole time, you're just pumping out these cannon fodder grunts, making sure you abuse the free army that you're getting. Of course, I did shoot this video um, earlier today and then at the same time, it did also get patched to uh, move the uh, the uh, uh, grunt army drop at the tier two unit drop leader power, it was swapped with the veteran C decrease uh, for enemies leader power. Uh, so of course I do not end up using that drop in this video. So don't worry about it, it's still the same concept. Whenever you're pushing up, like say as soon as you have around 11 cannon fodder grunts as usually when I push up to a power node, always make sure you send one of your cannon fodder grunts to capture the node and then have the rest deal with the sentinel. They will have so many cannon fodder grunts to deal with that they won't know who to shoot, and then you just cap the power node and you have it. Then you just kill the rest of all your guys. As you're seeing there, Tech 2 started at two minutes and 10 seconds roughly mini bases up and running right now and then this is where we get into the fun stuff so what i actually do on my mini base the second it's done is i throw down a raid camp and then on my main base when it's upgraded i go foundry raid camp again my concept behind this is that i will have anti-infantry with rangers anti-vehicle with hunters and i'll also have anti-air with reavers if i want and then also at the same time i have two sets of anti-base units that would be the grunt riders um, sorry, the Brute Riders, grunt, the, the Grunts riding the Brute guys, and then Locusts. Those are my two uh, favorite units for taking out bases. Locusts, of course, being my favorite. Right there, you did see that I did go for the, the unit drop there, but of course, you don't actually have to do that. The concept behind that is actually you're going to want to go for Please Don't Shoot Me to get you out of that sticky situation because right now, you're on a snowball towards success because you're going to have Tech 2 way ahead of your opponent. you still got all these units out on the field to defend yourself, and you're going to have, uh, say, counter units here in a matter of seconds. Of course, I am playing against a legend. Legendary AI, uh, looks like Atriox in this game, so uh, he's actually kind of messing up my cannon fodder grunts here, but like I said, just look at the mini-map, you're going to see a constant swarm. Of course, since I did see all these units here in the middle of the map and their infantry units, I am going to make a couple rangers in the mix, look at that, I'm still mini-base, main base, constant cannon fodder swarm, it's just, they just don't stop, it doesn't stop basically the entire game until you really have everything rolling. Of course, right here, uh, you also want to push out with your swarm the second you grab one power node. That's one point I want to get at. The second you have a power node, you start pushing across the map. You go right to the enemy base. If you get to the enemy base, you know, you start attacking it. You pull back if you need to, whatever. The basic, the, the cool mix I have going on right here for this. Look at these. This, this legendary AI, AI is actually sick. Like, I'd rather have him on my team than some other guys I play with. Uh, no offense, Ryan. So what I have right here is I have three uh, rangers queued up. What I'm going to do is squeeze in some heavy grunts every now and again because they don't cost any power. And I've upgraded all of the supply pads on my main. Sorry. Sorry. I've upgraded all the harvesters on my main at this point. So that way I have a full supply potential off my main base. And uh, we're having the double raid camp foundry situation is very helpful for any... It's only four minutes in the game, guys. And I've got five rangers. I have a complete... I'm teched up all the way. And, you know, we still have an army out here in the middle of the map dealing with enemies. That's the magic of Yap Yap. Of course, here I am starting to make a couple Locusts because I want to get aggressive on enemy base. 
The great thing about rangers is they are detector units right here, so a lot of these little mines that are dropped from these hammer brutes will get sniped out. I, of course, I am doing a little bit of manual selection there. Ooh, also, if you guys didn't notice, they did change the uh, highlight locator on Sentinels to be bright purple. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Y'all might see it. Ooh, ooh, that's nice, right? Uh, just the little things that matter. Uh, another thing, too, I've noticed is that uh, cannon fodder grunts have a really tough time uh, attacking... I shouldn't say attacking, sorry. Capturing power nodes on the map. So make sure if you're sending your, your cannon fodder grunts every now and again to grab these nodes that you do it at least a couple times. As you're going to see here, Atriox player decides to go for an early attack on me here with a bunch of those hammer brutes because uh, the computer has just basically realized, oh, I have to do something now or I might not win this. So here we go. I have my eco is so good, I can throw down a shield gen on my base during this attack. I'm pulling my entire army back because I know if I deal with this right now, this early in the game, I'm going to be good. I pulled my locust away. Have my rangers thrown in the game. He's doing, that. He's doing some pro strats here. This is like season one stuff where you just drop all the mines across the entire base and then get it damn one shot. He's doing pretty good. Of course, here we go. My entire army is showing up. I got a lot of rangers in, the, in this mix, so all these uh, infantry units will fall. Look at him try to pull them back. Damn AIs, you're not smarter than me. I'm smarter than the damn computer. All of my rangers will just make quick work of these guys, and then I can get aggressive. Look at that, and the shield comes up. Look at that, icing on the cake, man. That's what I'm talking about. Moving across the map here, we will do a lot of the damage that we need to to these uh, few stragglers. And we're just going to get aggressive on the base. Um, just from game sense and experience, look at that. I go turret third is my third leader power. Once again, to recollect before I start getting more elaborate into this. Oh, look, I just lost like 25 damn fodder grunts right there because that's stupid mine. Uh, before I get into the science one more time, I want to talk about leader powers. So I got methane wagon first. Then what you're going to do now with the new uh, unit drop switcheroo, you're going to get please don't shoot me for the clutch play if you ever get yourself in a sticky, yeah, you ever get yourself in a sticky situation and get right out, no problem. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go for the shade turret drop because having four shade turrets early in the game is so phenomenal. Not early, six minutes, well, it's, it's, it's still beginning of the game around six minutes. So having these shade turrets available, especially when you're trying to defend your main base, if your opponent tries to do like a sneak attack. Um, or say you're trying to get aggressive on the enemy base here. So right away, look, I have a, such a sizable army. I got I got anti-infantry, I got anti-building, I got uh, I got anti-vehicle as well. So a couple choppers rolling out here will just get one shot by my hunters. I'm just going to keep the pump going. And then if I really need to, what I'll do is I will actually just hop in and start making some reavers. You know, that's the magic of this build. Um, if you're going against a UNSC player, I actually would recommend going uh, double foundry. Uh, right on your on your uh, main base as soon as it's upgraded to tech 2 so that way you can quickly go into anti-air anti-building because that's generally speaking uh, what, What's been easier with me or for me? Um, I generally speaking don't see a lot of vehicles early play from UNSC in this new meta But of course say those hero units may like the forge hog the ice cream truck Serena's ice cream truck and uh, Say like Jerome those are all really strong leaders even sergeant Johnson now as well Those are all really strong leaders that can be countered with double raid camp as well So you really just have to mess around with this build a lot and see what's going on and Of course the beginning is very micro intensive grabbing all of the uh, supply crates on the map But at the same time, you know it rewards you so much because you get that second extractor You get two extractors as your first two buildings. That's just something completely bonkers And it, it's it's something that pays so well you get scared, you're like, oh no, I don't want to do this. You'll have so many cannon fodder grunts if a hero rush starts pushing up on you. You can surround them, stall them. All it's going to take is for you to push out to the middle of the map, catch them on their way across to attack your base, and then you surround them, stall them as much as possible, just like I'm saying, and then all you do is you just build the counter units. It's that simple. Of course, here I am going to upgrades as well. Um, I did upgrade my second extractor, I believe, at a certain point. I do not upgrade my second extractor until all of my supply pads, all my, oh, sorry, sorry, someone's going to hate on me for that, until all of my harvesters are completely upgraded. I bought my expo as quickly as I could, threw down a, another extractor to get the power rolling even more, and that was that. That's the game. So anyway, guys, of course, against a real human being, it's going to be different, but this is the basis of the build. Thank you so much for watching the Speed Tech Swarm build. This has been Slick from Breaking the Clutch, and we'll see you guys next time.